The Kerry coastline is stunning. The relentless battle between land and ocean has carved out nearly 700 kilometers of shoreline, famous the world over. But not all of the Kerry coast is as resilient as this. While rocks and cliffs take time to wear down, a powerful storm can alter other landscapes overnight. A survey by Coastwatch has listed coastal erosion as the number one threat to Ireland's coastlines over the past 25 years, of greater concern than pollution, flooding or dumping. Farmers have been left stunned by the destruction of their land. Unbelievable damage done. Prime agricultural land washed away, roads washed away, uh, fields filled with seawater. It's untold damage. Further west in Ballinskelligs, the same storm has left a 700-year-old castle in danger of collapse. Surrounding land was swept away here by powerful waves. If we get another, if we get another storm or two storm, you know, like we had over the last couple of weeks, you will wake up some morning. There will be no more this castle. With our prevailing winds blowing from the southwest, the undulating Kerry coast has to face down the Atlantic Ocean in all her moods. On calm days like this, it's easy to forget that the very sand on this beach is itself the result of centuries of erosion. And on the 6th of January 2014, Ross Bay got clobbered by the biggest storm in a generation. Mostly the sea just nibbles at the land, but sometimes it bites. And in January 2014, the Atlantic tore into Ross Bay. Journalist Sean McIntyre was on the ground that day. But you were actually here at the time, weren't you? Yeah, Nolig the Man, 6th of January. Yeah. And the locals arrived down here in the morning and the place was just devastated. Um, it was like a war zone. You had about three feet of, of uh, rock armory, stones, rubble, just hurled in from the sea. Rock armories, those big, huge rocks, is it? Huge boulders, um, all carried in here. About a kilometre of that road here was just obliterated. Tarmac was ripped up, stones uh, thrown up from the beach. The playground down here was destroyed, completely covered in, in stones and boulders. Like, there, there are big issues with coastal erosion here for many years, but they've never seen it so bad. You know, they were shocked, really. If it was that unexpected, were people here caught unawares? They weren't, we'd say that the, the, the initial surge came in during the night and it was in the morning really when people started to come down and they, they realised the extent of the damage and, you know, they were shocked by it. I was on the train in 2008 and a woman across me said, we had a terrible storm in Ross Bay last night and a half of the spit was swept away. That's down here, isn't it? That's right, there's about a, a kilometre gap between both sets of dunes. It, it, it's brought about massive changes in the dynamic, the tidal dynamic of the area. Yeah. There's huge concern about the, the Castle Main Harbour, the, the, the landward side of it. You've got uh, mussel fishermen, you've got uh, scallop fishermen, you've got a community in and around Cremon who had been protected by this barrier of sand dunes. It's, it's breached now. You're talking about people's homes, you're talking about people's properties, you're talking about people's livelihoods. I'm not exaggerating this point at all, but there are hundreds of houses today, right down to the point of Cremon, seriously at risk of tidal flooding. These families haven't stepped a wink. Four nights, no sleep. The water will be gone under the beds. You're looking at a county that has over 650 kilometres of coastline, yeah. some of it quite soft. Uh, they estimated recently that uh, 50, 50 kilometres was in serious danger of collapse. There's a great saying in, yeah. in, in Irish, in West Kerry, Sheen Tide and Marsht it, the tide is the master. And while Kerry County Council get on with the job of repairing the car park area at a cost of 1.3 million euro, further up the beach, there's no amount of money that could ever repair the damage. For the best part of a decade, Dr. Jimmy Murphy from University College Cork has been studying the shifting sands between Ross Bay and Inch. Well, you know, Jimmy, uh, they say timing is everything, and as an engineer studying coastal erosion and so on, you couldn't have been born and, and work in a better time. To me, this is the most significant morphological event that has occurred in this country with 
with decades, you know, so there's more sand moving here than nearly in any other place in the country. We find it very important to try and figure out where the sand is going and what is going to happen long term. The processes that started the erosion here in Ross Bay began in about 2000, but the dunes were actually breached in 2008, you know, you know, so, and since 2008 the breach has grown bigger and the dunes have continued to erode. You can see that there's been a lot of erosion with, with this marm grass being dropping down from the top of the dunes. Inch Beach has largely been unaffected, but Ross Bay Beach has lost millions of tonnes of sand since 2008. How much do you reckon? Well, since we've started studying it and we've looked at the, the dune and the size of the dune since about 2000, we reckon that the, there could be upwards of 10 million tonnes of sand taken off the dunes here. And there's nothingness here there's between nothing this now. grass we, we and that this grass? Big, this open area here now, which used to be all dune, and now it's, it's all gone. My God, that is just some expense, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite amazing when you see it the first time, yeah. This breach now has been opened up from maybe 100 metres up to over a kilometre wide. You know, I can't help but think of the locals here when they came down here after that big upset in 2008 and said, my God, I can see villages That's right, that I've yeah, never yeah. seen before. That's right, yeah. And I suppose uh, an impact of this event has been increased flooding of all these areas inside here because you've opened up those areas to the sea a lot more than they have been before. And how high were the dunes here, say, in 2008? Yes, some of the dunes were over 20 metres high, you know, you know, and they're, they're all 20 gone. metres or 20 feet? 20 metres. I mean, that's some gaping hole to drive that's into. That's right, yeah. That's, that's why there's millions of tonnes of sand gone off this area here, and it's now sitting out in the bay. If you look out into the bay there, you, you, you can see an area of white water out there that oh, indicates yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where the sand now lies. So what kind of work are you doing down here? So we're tracking the dune line, the, the erosion rates on the, the visible part of the beach, and then, you know, since most of the sand moves into the water, we need to track where the sand has gone in the water itself. Yeah, between the channel of the beach and the bar, you can get over there and get one more line over that way. So we bought a jet ski and we, we fixed this instrumentation onto it that actually measures the, the, the bed levels, you know, so between the GPS and uh, the echo sound that we can get the depths in terms at of this point, at this point, at yeah. this date, and we come back in a few months' time, do it again, and see how the depths have changed. So, if you were kind of fast forward, flick through those, you would see the way to shifting. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And so then, what can you or Kerry County Council or anybody do then with that information to stop this whole? I mean, this beautiful landscape disappearing. Yeah. Well, I think before you do anything, you have to understand the environment and its behaviour. You know, so there's no point coming along here once you see erosion occurring and saying, you know, so we're going to, we're going to do it. this or do that. Each beach and how it behaves and responds to coastal protection is different. There's maps maybe 200 years ago or 150 years ago that show a very narrow dune here, which indicated that it could have breached maybe up to 200 years ago and reformed again. So are you telling me that a structure several kilometres long, 30, 20, 30 metres high, has probably appeared and disappeared That's right, and yeah. reappeared? That's right, yeah. Really? Yeah. And would you be in favour of letting nature take its course or do you feel like shaking your fist at the heavens and saying no, leave the beach for, alone? In certain cases you have to intervene with physical structures, but in the case of this beach here, my, my view is that, that we shouldn't intervene and we should just let nature take its course. You know, that there, is, there is a case for doing something with the properties that are flooding and maybe protect, providing them with additional protection. You know, so that, that would be sort of my recommendation anyway. There's an old Irish proverb that translates as Continuous weathering eventually wears the rock. And God knows the Irish coastline has taken a right old hammering, particularly over the last couple of years. So the big question is, what are the Irish doing to help themselves? I've come to find out. To me, Jimmy, it looks like a swimming pool. It uh, smells like a swimming pool, but it ain't a swimming pool, no? No, it isn't. What we're standing beside here is the ocean test 
laboratory here in UCC. So we have a paddle generation system here at the side of the tank and we run waves down the tank and test the reaction of different wave and wind energy devices to those waves. The waves Jimmy and his team generate aren't very large, but they are to scale and this allows researchers to safely examine how the energy generated by this kind of storm swell can be safely and harmlessly dissipated by something like these ECAB blocks. Well, I suppose what we're trying to represent is a typical situation on a beach, you know, where you'd, you'd have the sand up against the dune face and covering some of the armour units. But then, when you get a severe storm condition, you get higher water levels and you get waves able to attack the dune system. And, you know, the waves come in and they catch the sand and they pull it out. Most of these units that you see here will be covered with sand the majority of the time. But then when you, you get a storm condition, the sand is washed away and the armour units will do their job. What's the scale here? How big are the other ones by comparison? It's one is the 30. One is the 30? Yeah. So in effect, well, that looks like a gently lapping piece of water. Yeah, right, it represents yeah. very big waves, very that's stormy right, conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's sucked all the sand out? That's right, yeah. It's amazing, you know, once the, the sand you know, sort of is, is attacked by waves, even very small waves, it's pulled out very easily. It has very little resistance to movement. See the waves coming in, but you can see how they're being absorbed, and like from this position you can see exactly how they just go blah 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 yeah, out, yeah, out. Yeah. Takes all the energy out. Yeah, that's a critical part of the design of them, to make the energy dissipate in through the structure, rather than on the surface of the structure itself. And, and how well have these performed now overall? These performed excellently, you know, we can't generate a wave big enough to cause these to fail. So there's some hope for the villages now exposed to the sea by Ross Bay's shifting sand dunes. And indeed, all across the West Coast, where many communities are still recovering from the storms of 2014. I suppose like most people, I subscribe to the idea of nature taking its own course, and I can't say I've ever been a huge fan of concrete. That said, when Irish lives and Irish livelihoods are under threat, I can see well how the very careful deployment and sensitive deployment of coastal defence systems like the ECAB will become more prevalent for us here in Ireland. And also it's encouraging to see Irish engineers and Irish businesses at the forefront of this technology.